Hello, GB Networks here. Today I'm hopefully going to be bringing you a short video and hopefully an easy video depending on your skill level of going through configurations on routers and stuff. This is more on the easy side, but this is going to be on how to port forward on TP-Link Archer A7 routers. Now there is another version called TP-Link Archer C7, I believe, or some variant like that I can't exactly remember. Um, I believe there's like A9, A7, C7, and C9 or something like that. But really the only difference is, is the hardware side. All the software side for the Archer series is the same. So let's get right into the video. So all you want to do is you will have to find the IP address of your router. Now I have mine set up as 192.168.1.1, but sometimes depending on your ISP or how you configured it, it might be like 192.168.1 or .0.1 or something like that. Uh, but you'll just want to find your IP address and we'll get to this login page here. And if you haven't like, done anything with your router if this is the first, first time setting it up. You, I believe it's admin admin. It's been a while since I've set my router up, uh, but I already have mine in, so I will type it in here and we'll get into the page. And if you don't type in correctly, you'll get that. And there we go. So you'll get into this landing page here. So as a quick side note, uh, TP-Link for some reason, whatever it is, at least on these types of routers, they name it weird, uh, which is why there's a few people that I've known that cannot find this. That's why I'm kind of making the video and I'll show you here in a one second. But yeah, all you do is you get to this landing page here and you will want to go to advance. Now, as you can see on this left side here, there's a lot of different options, but we want to go down to NAT forwarding. Now, this is where, why, for some reason, I don't know why they do, couldn't do or say port forwarding, but it, what they call it is virtual servers. So this is where you want to go. This is where your port forwarding is going to be. So if there's nothing in here, if this is your first time, um, there will be nothing in here unless there's someone else configured it. But if it's your first time, uh, all you'll want to do is click add. Now, the service type, you can do whatever you want. I'll show you a few existing types, uh, DNS, FTP. You can do whatever you want here, like SMTP or POP3 is like a mail server type of deal. But whatever device you are going to port forward, just name it. Like today, I will be showing you how to port for like my Plex server uh, to view it over my network. Uh, so I'm just going to name it Plex. If you name it like camera or whatever it is, it, it doesn't matter. Just name it whatever you want, basically. So I'm just going to name it Plex. So now external port. Now this all depends on your software or your device that you, um, you are going to want to port forward. Um, my Plex server or Plex as a software uh, wants the external port 32400. Now you will need to check on your device or the manual or whatever on which port to open or else you will not be able to access it. And for Plex, it is 32400. This is how you will be able to access Plex or your cameras or uh, your Unify controllers or whatever you have that you want to port forward, this is how you will be able to view it out of your network or log into it without like a VPN or something like that. So your internal IP, and obviously you can see mine is saved, but uh, this will be your IP address of your server, of your camera, anything like that. Now I do recommend to set a static IP, that way it doesn't change. And if it does change and you have it set to a different IP, you, this will not work. You will need to set a static IP and you can look to different videos on how to do that for your certain device or software or whatever you're wanting to port forward. So as you can see, my internal IP in my Plex server is 192.168.1.2. So I put that in your internal port. This is all you do. You just type in uh, the same as the external port and you, you got it. Uh, the protocol here is at least for Plex, it's TCP. Now you will also need to look on what device or software it, it wants to do. Uh, sometimes it might be UDP or TCP, whatever it wants you to do, you just 
put in here and as you can see my plex server wants tcp now you click uh, want to do enable the sentry and you click save and there you go it's that easy and now you will have port for your device so all you do is you go to your internal ip on like uh not your internal network or yeah not your internal network but uh your external um you're not on your uh your internal network you just go to your ip you put in your internal port uh after the so say we have like um 192.2 and all you do is you just type in after that 34200 and then you click uh, enter. And most of the time, if, if done correctly, it will take you to your uh, your device that you want to access out of your network. Um, if not, there'll be some troubleshooting specifically for your device. So, but yeah, it, it's that easy. It's not too hard. It's just really weird. I don't know why they would name it virtual servers, but it is what it is so yeah that's the video um if you like it please give it a like or do whatever you want to um and i guess we will see you in another video